All right, Palmer, let's get into this. Um, Auburn Georgia game, not a lot of success for Auburn over the last 20 years. I think I think I counted five wins. Um, and they were pretty much in years that that Auburn was, you know, re really damn good. Um, 2004, 2005 was a, that classic in Athens, and then 10, 13, and 17 all SEC championship teams for Auburn. That's about well, well, SEC West teams that 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 won there and were in the SEC championship game um, for sure. So pretty much has taken a championship level Auburn team to beat Georgia in the last 20 years. Everything else has not gone their way. Um, I mean, the big storyline I think coming in is obviously Georgia being number one, and then on all, on Auburn side, it's the offensive disaster that was College Station. Yeah, Palmer, I, I don't know if you caught uh, much of the Auburn Texas A and M game, um, but offensively for Auburn, it was atrocious. Two hundred total yards, three offensive points. Nearly half of those yards came on the last two drives of the game when I think A and M had dialed the defense back a tad and it was more it was um you know Auburn was just trying to do whatever they could Peyton Thorne was was really bad um 44 yards passing and really against two power five teams Cal and Texas A&M Auburn's offense has, has scored 17 points in two games in those two games uh 24 offensive drives in those two games only two two touchdowns um it's been bad you took away UMass and Sanford it's been really really bad for Auburn on offense, a um, lot of issues at quarterback. Questions about play calling, although I don't, I think some of that's overblown. Um, it's really just they got to figure some things out at, at quarterback. They had some untimely penalties at, against Texas A&M that cost them, but the the the, the quarterback issue is a problem. Peyton Thorne not keeping his eyes downfield, breakdown in pass protection a little bit, not finding open receivers that were there. Um, and so Auburn goes into this game uh, with very little confidence on offense. I mean, they're going to have to manufacture this confidence. They're going to have to have a really good first quarter and try to build back some confidence against, obviously, a talented Georgia defense. From your perspective, um, even if you haven't seen Auburn a ton, how is Georgia's defense playing we know they're we know they're talented. We we obviously know that. We know they're really good. Is there anything that Georgia's doing defensively that would give Auburn hope at all on offense? Yeah, I mean, I think, and if I caught that correctly, Hugh named said that that Thorne is going to be the starter going into this one. Is that yeah, right? There shouldn't be any change. He was like, "We're still waiting through that," but I don't foresee there being a change. I mean, right. He said last week before before the A and M game. Peyton Thorne knows the offense the best. He understands where guys are supposed to be. And I don't like, so that's not in question. It would take a lot for Peyton Thorne to lose his job, right? which you, you, you look, a few more performances like college station and you're going to be pushing it. But yeah, he gets what to do the most. He's the most experienced player. It just, it didn't translate on Saturday for him. T to me, I think what'll be interesting. And, and I have gotten to catch a little bit of Auburn. Um, obviously that Cal game um, being, being such a late kick. Yeah. Um, you know, was catching a, a little bit of that game through the, uh, you know, trying to fight off the sleepies, uh, Texas A&M being an early kick with Georgia having a late kick last week, um, was able to watch a little bit of that one as well. And, and I, you know, what interests me the most about, um, you know, this matchup is the quarterbacks and, you know, how does, um, how does Auburn use both of those guys? Because I, I would imagine just like we saw against Texas A&M, um, because Robbie Ashford brings something to the table, they're going to use both of them, um, in, in my opinion. And I think especially against a Georgia defense that can put pressure on you in so many different ways. Um, and, and I know Thorne is, is more athletic than people give him credit for. Um, but Ashford is very clearly the more athletic of the two. So, you know, I, I'm interested to see how Georgia, um, you know, prepares for both quarterbacks and, and, you know, do they have different uh, plans? Are, are they going to try to bring pressure to Thorne and, and force him to show the athleticism? Uh, or, you know, if, if Ashford's in the game, do they kind of sit back and, you know, play it a little bit safer? Um, you know, looking at how Georgia has played quarterbacks, and I, I think that they've played maybe the SEC's most talented quarterback so far this season in, in Spencer Rattler. 
the way that they approached that in, in the first half was they kind of let him they, – they probably brought three-man, four-man pressures. And, and then in the second half and, – and Spencer responded really well to that. I think he was 16 of 18 at halftime. Um, you know, in the second half they decided, you know, hey, we can't just sit back and, and you know, let this guy pick us apart. Um, you know, that was with a, an All-American safety and, and Javon Bullard that was out. David Daniel Sisavon uh, was starting in his place. TBD on Bullard's status for this week um, as, as he still makes his way back from an ankle sprain. Um, you know, Georgia was missing its, its sack leader in Michael Williams. Last year's sack leader, this year's sack leader um, coming off the edge at defensive end. And that is a th- – th- both those guys, both those guys are All-American caliber players um, that have a big impact on this defense. And so, you know, to me, I'm very interested to see how much pressure Georgia decides to bring – um, because they played their best football, uh, you know, defensively this season when they were bringing that pressure. But obviously, doing so puts a lot of pressure on the secondary to play, uh, you know, almost perfect. And and you know, you can't have blown assignments and miscues on the back end if if you're going to bring, you know, bring the house up front. Yeah, I think um, I think it's just going to be. I think the challenge is how does Auburn how, – how do you build – how do you build any confidence against, you know, the number one team in the country and, and certainly one of the best defenses in the country? I, I'm not sure what they're going to have to do in that first quarter. Um, they're going to have to have some success somehow, some way. A couple big plays, something. Because they just come out of that A&M game pretty low, talking about needing to find some swagger back, needing to find some energy back on offense. And – um obviously being at home will help that right but, uh but boy i mean it was just you know auburn's auburn's run the ball fairly well even in cal even against cal and texas a&m they had success running the football um the problem at cal was they had four turnovers so every time they'd get going they turned the ball they turned the ball over twice at midfield um and then texas a&m similar had a couple of times where they broke inside the AM 30 or 25 yard line, but a penalty brought it back and 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 hurt their drives as well. And so you look at what Auburn did running the football against Texas AM again, they 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 did some good things, but if that's all you can do and then you toss in some penalties, it just it really stalled their drives out and it resulted in no points. George is obviously going to be talented up front. So Auburn's going to have to have success there. They've been okay. Damari Austin's not going to play. He's out indefinitely. That's a that's a bummer for Auburn. Um, Brian Batty, the transfer from South Florida, small kid, pretty fast, had, had a good game against the Aggies. But it all comes down to Peyton Thorne and how is he going to fix some of the issues against Georgia. It's just not a good recipe. It's just not a good recipe for Auburn. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how they're going to fix it. You know, Auburn, Auburn usually runs a lot of RPO stuff. Well, they want to anyway um, with Hugh Freeze, but they didn't against Texas A&M. Hugh Freeze said afterwards, I don't really know why we didn't. Um, you know, obviously the play calling is Philip Montgomery. So I, I'm just I'm, – I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what Auburn's going to have to do, but it's going to have to happen early. If that game – I mean, if it gets into the second quarter, it's 14-0. I mean, this thing could get this thing could get ugly. Auburn has to figure out a way in the first quarter to put a touchdown on the board. I think at least a field goal. They got to get points in the first quarter, which they haven't. They didn't get points in the first quarter against A and M, against Sanford, or against Cal. Three straight games they haven't scored at all in the first quarter. Well, and and along those lines, Georgia has been a little bit slower starting of a team, and and I know we'll get to you know, the Georgia offense and, and Auburn defensive battle here. But, you know, Georgia has been a slower starting team or, or slower scoring, as Kirby likes to say. Um, you know, th- they ended up scoring on their first drive this past week, um, and, and that was big, um, a, a big momentum boost there because they had struggled to do so. But, you know, so far this season, um, only 17 points in the first quarter. Um, that's four first quarter, 17 points, a little over, um, if my math is correct, they're 4.25 points per game uh, in that first quarter. And, you know, little over a field goal, under a touchdown. You know, if, if like you said, if if Georgia is coming out and they're playing, you know, and, and up 14 nothing in, in this one at the end of one, 
Um, you're right. It, it could get ugly, um, especially when you look at the success Georgia has had on the flip side of starting a half. In the second half, they are outscoring opponents by a wide margin in the third quarter. Haven't given up any third quarter points this season. Um, so, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, obviously it's, it's, it would be huge for Auburn's offense to, to get a kick start there. And, you know, Hugh being somebody that has played against Kirby and had success against Kirby and, and that kind of a defense, um, you know, I, I think that maybe he's a little bit more involved in, in that play calling this week. Um, you know, maybe he's, uh, you know, ready to scheme some things up or has some tricks up his sleeve. And like you said, being in front of a home crowd, um, you know, pulling out all stops to, uh, to, to, you know, keep this one close, get, get, keep that crowd in the game. I don't think you'll have to get the crowd in the game. Um, that, that's one thing that I, I think, you know, works against Georgia is they're going to have to take the crowd out of it. Auburn has to keep the crowd in it early. Yeah, it's a good it's it's a good point. Um, I think the I think it's gonna be one of those things where I think the crowd's gonna have a lot of energy. I think it'll be. I'm curious to see what it's like in the first quarter because coming off that A and M game, that was so demoralized. I mean, that was so rough. If you watch that as an Auburn fan, um, but it's they're still three and one. It's obviously Hugh Freeze's first season. I I think that they'll be that it'll be pretty electric from the jump. I don't necessarily think it'll be a deal where. You know it's going to be a great crowd, but there's almost a little bit of a tempered, um, you know, enthusiasm when the game starts. Like, like they're kind of just going, "I hope we can keep it close." You know, um, I think it'll be pretty rowdy early on. I do. I don't. I don't think it'll be a deal where people are sitting around thinking, "I oh, hope we can stay in this thing," and then and then they get in as go. I, th- I think it'll be pretty electric from the beginning in terms of the fans and trying to keep them going. Um, the good thing is Auburn's defense has played fairly well. If we talk about the other side of the ball, I think um, they're, they're not great by any means on that side. Um, but I think they've been a little bit better than I think people thought they would be. At my expectation was the defense was going to be the weak point. And, now, and really it's the opposite right now. My expectation was that the front specifically didn't quite have the depth to 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 hold up and and granted we're only four games into the season and one conference game so the defense could could still have issues as we go but so far um auburn's defense has been pretty good pretty sound they forced um they forced i guess eight turnovers now in four games they've scored two touchdowns um they just they're getting crushed by injuries palmer like they have two starters that are out um, Austin Keys at linebacker and Keontae Scott, who's maybe their best football player, um, a fantastic player and athlete, was the number one punt returner too. He got hurt against Sanford and he's out. So you got two starters on the defensive side that that are out. And then you just got a bunch of guys banged up. Donovan Kaufman, who's a really talented player at Nichols, banged up. Zion Puckett, their starting safeties, banged up. Um, other guys have, have dealt with some injuries, whether it's Keldrick Falk or Larry Nixon at linebacker. Um, Nehemiah Pritchett, there's their other starting quarterback, just came back. His first game back this season was the AM game. So you just have had, had a lot of guys in and out <clears throat> on that defensive side of the ball. Um, and and a lot of those guys are going to play, I would imagine, against Georgia. They're just going to be not 100%, and they can't afford some of those positions. They cannot afford another injury. Um, so they've been okay. Gave up some pass plays against AM in that third quarter, some busted coverages. Um, been okay against the run, gave up a couple of big long runs to AM. I don't know how much of that was the line versus the linebackers misfitting. Um, but but we're pretty good against the run for the most part against AM. They're just a group that the, the offense has got to help them. I mean, the defense can't can't sit there and go out on the field three and out when the offense is going three and out, three and out, three and out. It's it's not not only from the snap count, but it's just demoralizing. And so I think that'll be big. Obviously, being at home. Give, give the defense a little bit of energy. Georgia's offense, though, you can tell me. I mean, um, trying to find things with Carson Beck looked pretty looked pretty efficient against the UAB. I, I didn't see every snap, but, I mean, I thought um, if they could have scored, you know, another – they could have tacked on another touchdown at the end if, if they keep starters in for sure, if not more. It's pretty much, to me, play action, you know, run the ball, find Brock Bowers as much as possible – 
you've obviously got talented dudes at receiver. What um, What's Carson Beck look like in that offense? Do you feel like they have their identity? Do they have the same type of explosive playmakers that they've had in the past? What, what does that thing look like compared to what it has the last two years with, with Stetson? Yeah, uh, you know, find Brock Bowers is, is a great offensive plan for, for Georgia. Yeah. Um, and, and that has kind of been, you know, a safety valve of sorts for Carson. And, and I think that that's not all too surprising um, when you consider he's a first-time starter and, and you look at, you know, we could be looking at a battle of banged-up units on the, on this side when Georgia's got the ball because Lab McConkey is it has not played so far this season. Georgia's running back room has been banged up. Dejan Edwards missed the first two games. Uh, Kendall Milton ha- has, you know, been battling some battled a hamstring injury during fall camp and wasn't full speed to, to start the season. Uh, he's now battling an MCL sprain. And, you know, what, what's his status for this week? Roderick Robinson, um, you know, they, they lost Br- Branson Robinson before the season, who was going to be one of their top two or three running backs. And, now you've got, you know, Roderick Robinson, uh, a true freshman that they, you know, got elevated up this uh, depth chart a little bit because of the injuries elsewhere. He's now dealing with an ankle sprain. And so, um, you know, you, you've got you, you've got a running back uh, issue for Georgia um, to the point that they have uh, been playing Dylan Bell, a, a wide receiver at running back a good bit. And He's been explosive. Um, you know, I think he adds a pass catching element out of the backfield. They've used Brock Bowers, lined him up in the backfield. Um, again, just any way that you can get 19 the ball is a good game plan. Yeah. Um, but I think that with that, with the, um, you know, injuries that they've got at receiver with, with Lab McConkey, um, injuries that they've got at running back, now you've got an offensive tackle in Amarius Mims that's, that's banged up. Um, so, you know, your, your protection, maybe, you know, you, you got to play it a little bit safer there. Um, you know, they, they showed something a little bit different against UAB. They came out fast. They, they pushed the ball downfield. Um, you saw Dominic love it getting open in space. Ra Ra Thomas, um, you know, a, another transfer love it from, uh, Missouri, who, if I'm not mistaken, had a big game against Auburn last year. Um, I, I could be wrong there, but, um, Ra Ra Thomas, you know, coming over from Mississippi State, he's getting involved in this uh, Georgia offense. Um, and, and so, you know, they are finding ways to push the ball downfield more in, in this past game than they, than they did. And in the second half of uh, South Carolina as well. Um, so I would say in the last three halves of offensive football from Georgia, you've seen more of what I think the offensive identity of this team will be. Um, I think that, you know, they, they struggled early on. And I think part of that is they struggled to run the ball. Um, you know, with Dejan Edwards being out, you know, he him, his return has added an element where they've been able to, you know, consistently push the ball, um, you know, th- through loaded boxes that they've faced. Um, you know, it, as a result, in the first few games, they were having to use screens as an extension of the run game. And, um, you know, they're, they're still doing that. I mean, again – get the ball in 19's hands as quick as possible. And, uh, you know, sometimes that means just throwing it out to the sideline and, and letting him stiff arm his way to the end zone. Yeah. Um, but, you know, th- so th- they are pushing the ball downfield more. Like you said, play action has become a bigger part of this offense with the emergence of a run game. And I think that that's big for Georgia finding their offensive identity. And I think that's big for Carson Beck because, again, we're talking about somebody who is has four starts under his belt. He's going to be making his first career road start on Saturday. Um, it, it's super important to get him comfortable. Uh, they did that last week. They did that well, but we're talking UAB. Um, and, and so, you know, how do they get him comfortable uh, early on against Auburn? Uh, like you said, a defense that's, that's you know, been a bit surprising. Um, interested to see what they do. Um, Kirby said that, you know, th- sometimes we, going into a road atmosphere like this, you got to simplify things offensively. Um, but I think that, you know, in, in Georgia's case here, um, with the need to get Carson Beck going early to help this offense as a whole, uh, you know, maybe you don't simplify things. Maybe you've got, uh, you know, a, a good script that you feel really good, uh, you know, coming out of the gate with. And 
Um, you know, that script is, you know, has, has some downfield shots in, in it like they did last week. They used tempo to their advantage. And so, you know, very interested to see what that looks like. Um, like I said, you know, there's, there's a lot of banged up players on Georgia's offense. Um, you know, you're, you're missing two all Americans right now on defense, but the offense, I would say the guys that they're missing, they probably don't have the, probably don't have the depth in in terms of the talent. Um, you know, defensively they've recruited so well that they've got the talent to replace those guys, um, it with, you know, down the two deep. Uh, but you know, offensively, I, I feel like they're they're struggling a little bit more to find the guys uh, to step up and replace those key playmakers. Yeah, and this is a game where I think Auburn would love to have Keontae Scott um, at the nickel. Keontae's he's you know he's about six one and a half, but he's an athletic player. He's a pretty good covered cover guy. I would imagine there would have been some opportunities there for him to try to stay on Brock Bowers from the nickel, maybe line him up there even and not rely on a linebacker to have to do it Um, because Keontae's got some length. But without him, it's going to be tough. Kaufman, his replacement's a really good player. He's just small. Um, Auburn will blitz a lot from that nickel position, whether it's Kaufman or bring a corner. Um, But but number five, Donovan Kaufman, will be a very, very active player. I don't know. I guess Eugene Asante, number nine at uh, linebacker for Auburn, he'll probably have to – to try to stay with Bowers at times, but you know, I mean, trying to cover Brock Bowers is, is really hard. I am curious about, um, you know, the Carson Beck aspect, just looking, I mean, you know, that is something, you know, Georgia started the year with four straight home games. And so your first road game is this environment, which early on will be, will be legit. Um, <clears throat> curious. I mean, Georgia does such a good job of running the ball and play action and, and working their quarterbacks in, you know, it's not like it's, it's never an offense where it's on the quarterback. It doesn't feel like, so it's not like you're stepping in and Carson Beck's got to be a superstar. Um, they do a good job. They can obviously lean on the running game and some things like that to make it easy on him. And their talent is just so good generally, but I am curious if Auburn's crowd, if Auburn's defense can come out, <clears throat> maybe be aggressive early on, um just see how Carson Beck responds um I'm sure he'll probably be fine as it goes on but it could be a challenge I mean first road game in this environment it could be something to watch early on if Auburn can dial up some pressure do something to maybe rattle him or make him uncomfortable early kind of buy some time if you will Carson Beck will will, will probably be fine and Georgia's offense will settle in but can Auburn can Auburn's defense do something early on to 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 buy him a few possessions, whether it's get, get, a, get a three and out or two or, you know, just rattle them, confuse them for a minute to where it maybe takes a drive or two for Georgia to sort of get back on track. Anything that I think to buy them time and to, and to shorten the game, if you will, um, could be could be huge. And obviously Auburn's offense doing something, anything would be uh, would be a great a great uh, contributing factor to to that. So what's the spread in this game? 17 and a half. I think I saw the other day. I guess it's is it still about that? I thought um, it was down to 14 and 14, 14 or so. Yeah. 14 and a half <laughs> is is kind of what I thought I, I had seen um, yeah. on, on Sunday. What's interesting is that, that so it came out at 17 and a half. I'm like, that sounds about right. I told our board on Monday, I was like, I don't really have a good reason why, but I was like, I feel like Auburn is gonna come out and and so at 17 and a half, I thought they were going to cover. I'm like, well, I don't know, man. I think Auburn, they're not going to look offensively. It's not, They're not going to look as bad as they did in College Station, even against a better defense. I just – I think being at home will help them. Peyton Thorne's played well at home. For some reason, he hasn't played well on the road. Like it's like a different thing. But he's looked pretty good at home. Um, and, and, I, and so I think he will look like a different player um, and have a little bit more confidence at home. And I think Auburn can hang around. It's just, you know, what can Auburn do offensively? Like best case scenario, what are they going to put up points wise? I mean, given what we've seen in two power five games for Auburn, it is hard for me to think they go out there and score more than 17. Like it, it's in it, that stretching it. I mean, given what we've seen, 
Now, if the defense forces turnovers and things like that, that's a fact. That's a different factor, right? If they get short field, if they get a punt return, um, things like that can can affect it. But if we're assuming Georgia doesn't have any turnovers or maybe turns the ball over once, and, and Auburn's offense has to do most of the work, unless they come out with just a fire game plan and Peyton Thorne is is you know finds confidence that he didn't have last week. And, and, and start slinging the ball and, and receivers make some plays that you haven't necessarily seen them make. I mean, some things have to happen in this game that I haven't seen is my point. And so I, I don't – it's hard for me to imagine Auburn topping 17 points in this game if they can even get there. And if that's the case, as good as Auburn's defense has played, which I think they've been pretty solid, I mean, George is too talented for me to probably I, – I think I think Auburn's defense would, would look at this and say we played well if we hold them to 21. Yeah, that's like, that's kind of what I had thought, 21. Yeah. But here's the thing, Justin, is, is that the next time Georgia covers a spread will be the first time they cover a spread <laughs> this season. And, and so – and obviously th- there's been some big numbers – um and, and you know yeah. against the competition, I had UAB for forty-two and a half. By the way, I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. UAB, that's a big number. Well, Kirby, what they do is they get up, but then Kirby's not afraid to play young players and sit it down and not sit there and win by fifty. That that win. and the yeah. fact that they haven't started that quickly. I mean, I yeah, true, in, true. in our staff predictions, um, I I did not have them covering the spread last week, and so and they did not. So. You know, I, I think that this this one, this number um, is a lot more reasonable, um, you know, in, in terms of, look, Georgia going out and, and expecting them to, just because of the G that's on the side of the helmet, to, you know, beat these inferior opponents by 50, by 45, um, you know, just expecting that without really diving into, well, they've got a first time starter at quarterback. They've got, you know, this running back out, that running back out, this wide receiver out, that all American out that, that it was a tall task. It was a tough ask of them. Um, like I said, I think that this number is a lot more reasonable. And I think that you're probably right. You know, just looking at Auburn and that offense, it's, you know, it, you're, asking them to play about as perfectly as possible. And, um, you know, j- just, I mean, Georgia, um, I mean, the, the, the average probably went up this past week, giving up 21 to, uh, to UAB, but you know, there was, there was a short field involved in that. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they, they fumbled a, a, a punt return, um, you know, late in, in, in that first half and, um, you know, gave UAB a short field. I think they ended up scoring from, you know, had to, punch it in from 30 yards out or something. Um, so, I mean, as long as Georgia doesn't make mistakes and, and I think that's, you know, again, talking about this road atmosphere, the unknown of how this team is going to respond to, to a hostile environment where they don't have 93,000 on their side. That's where you could see them maybe making a mistake or two. But like you said, I mean, I, I think that it's a tall task to ask, uh, you know, this, this Georgia team, this Georgia offense and defense and special teams um, that, that's so talented to make three, four, five mistakes on top of, you know, probably playing on, on top of Auburn offensively playing the best that they have all season. So I, I probably would have them covering um, 14 and a half. Um, 17 and a half. I don't know. I mean, like you said, that's, that's, um, you know, where that, that, that line opened at, um, a couple weeks ago. And, and I think it's moved down. Um, you know, so certainly interested to see, um, you know, how, how they respond. And I think like, I mean, like we said earlier in, in this show is I think the first quarter, we will have a good feel on, on the way that this game is going to go. If, if Auburn is keeping this close in the first quarter, you know, maybe, maybe the Tigers cover, maybe the Tigers keep it closer uh, than than everybody expects. But if, if Georgia jumps on them early, I think that we could be looking at, at Georgia's first cover of the season. Yeah, that would be, that'd be worst case scenario. Georgia jumps out 10, nothing, 14, nothing after one, that would be worst case scenario uh, because um, yeah, you you would just have an Auburn offense that would, that would already be dealing with a lot. Um, 
and and now they have to to try to come back against that. It's gonna be tough, and then need to be dealing with an Auburn defense that's sitting there going great. We're already giving up ten or fourteen points. We got an offense that's not moving the ball. How do we rally the troops? That would be worst case scenario. Auburn needs to get out of that first quarter. Um, and then that third quarter will be big too. I mean, Auburn, <clears throat> I mean, look, Auburn was it was six to three in college station at halftime. And that third quarter, defensively, for whatever reason, they had a couple of busted coverages in that third quarter and allowed two touchdowns, and, and then it was 20 to three. Um, Auburn's defense played pretty well, but then but those they just had a couple of bad drives in that third quarter combined with a couple three and outs on offense and it went bad really quickly. Um, so you can't, you can't have that as well. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of with you. I think 14 is coverable. 17 seemed like a big number. Um, first quarter will be big. I do think we'll be, I do think we'll be third quarter in this Auburn Georgia game still going, okay, can Auburn make a play here? You know, I still think there will be an opportunity there as the third quarter gets going, maybe midway through, where Auburn will have a shot. I'd be very curious to know what Vegas thinks about that first quarter line. Yeah. And, and I don't know how easily we could find that, um, especially, you know, early on in the week. But, you know, that, that, that to me, I think if, if you wanted to kind of parlay those two, um, you know, Auburn, covers the first quarter covers the game that's that's the recipe it, and and then vice versa georgia covers georgia covers um you know i i'd have a hard time seeing georgia covering that first quarter auburn covering the game or auburn covering first quarter and georgia covering the game yeah that's a fair point i think that's a fair point um, you mentioned um lad mcconkey any any other starters any other big guys that you think won't play on Saturday for Georgia, Auburn, outside of the two guys that have already missed uh, games now, I, I'm not sure that there's going to be anything from the A&M game that comes over, just nicks and bruises and banged up. But I don't know that there's any anything – for well, other than Damari Austin, obviously, which is – he's kind of starter quality. So, really, it's three starters out. But anybody from Georgia that's like, hey, this guy might not play, and if he didn't, that'd be a big deal? Yeah, I mean, it's it's TBD on Lad because, you know, he, Kirby told us on, on Monday that – He's back at practice this week and that they're hoping, um, you know, it, it has tr truly been a week to week thing. He, he's dealing with a back injury and it has been, you know, he'll practice for the week. And then all of a sudden Friday or Saturday, he wakes up and it's hurting him. You know, mm -hmm. who, who among us doesn't feel that. Um, What's his injury? I, it, I think it's back spasms, huh. um, but, but it's yeah. back related for sure. So, you know, it, it's been a situation where, um, truly day to day, week to week thing. And, and Kirby said that they, they took an advised shutdown on him, shut him down, um, for two weeks. And so he was unavailable completely in the prep for South Carolina and, uh, and UAB. Um, but they're hoping to get him back at practice this week and see how he responds. And so, uh, you know, to me, I think we'll have a good idea of if, if Lab McConkey makes this trip to Auburn, you know, with the 70 man travel roster for Georgia, I'd be surprised if he's not playing. Um, but just because, you know, you look, you don't use one of those values, you know, so valuable spots. Um, you know, if, if a guy's just, you know, completely unavailable to play. So that that's the main one. Javon Bullard would be the other one, um, you know, dealing with an ankle sprain. Um, you know, he, he warmed up for the South Carolina game. He was dressed out, warmed up, um, truly was a game time decision, but Kirby said that he didn't feel great. Um, you know, and, and so they, they ended up sitting him. Um, he did not dress this past week for UAB. Um, don't think he practiced as much for that week, but I also think that that was probably by design, knowing that we can get by without Javon Bullard and, and, you know, let's, let's get him ready for Auburn. So I, I, to me, I think Javon Bullard is back. Um, I, he would still be questionable. Um, but I lean more yes for him. Um, McConkey. I definitely questionable, maybe even doubtful. I probably lean no with him until I see him out on a field. Um, Michael Williams, I, I, I would imagine that they're going to get him back. Um, you know, Kirby said he was dealing with a little bit of a sickness. Um, 
And, and so, you know, th- they had a guy, you know, ill for South Carolina that was back and and back in the lineup against UAB. I would imagine the same thing is going to be the case here. Um, Amarius Mims starting right tackle. He's out, um, you know, that, but that's, that's a, you know, extended thing. He, he's not even questionable for this dealing with a, uh, you know, sprained ankle, had the tightrope surgery. Tyrion Ingram Dawkins is, is probably is on that too deep and, and probably would be considered a starter by Kirby. Um, you know, he's, he's a defensive end there with, with, uh, Williams. And look, if, if you're missing both those guys, that is a questionable, you know, too deep there. They've, they've probably got a freshman and Gabe Harris on that too deep that, that was recruited as an outside linebacker and moved to defensive end. Um, so, you know, you, you, th- those are the big ones, um, would watch Kendall Milton as well. Um, although, you know, what, what he's dealing with, um, you know, the, the timetable for his return, um, very much up in the air. So Georgia's a banged up football team. Kirby said it ahead of last week that this was the longest list of injuries he has ever had to deal with at Georgia. And, and Ron Corson and the athletic trainer said that as well. Um, but you know, I, I do think that this team is getting healthier. We, we saw, you know, more guys dress out, um, against UAB and, and I would imagine, you know, that some of the guys that didn't dress out was probably precautionary. Yeah. Well, yeah, it sounds like both teams are dealing with some, certainly a lot of nicks and bruises and beat up. As that's SEC the SEC. Play. That's just that's getting life. started. Yeah. So is for college Auburn, football in September. No doubt. And uh, yeah, all, for Auburn, they got to get through this week. They get a bye after Georgia. And then uh, things get easier. They go to Baton Rouge and then host uh, Ole Miss. So it's fine. Auburn's in a great spot nothing uh you know nothing hard upcoming at all but they got to get healthy they need to get through this game for auburn and without any further injuries and then go into the bye week and try to rest up um but that's georgia Whereas Auburn's for georgia this is the start of the slate i mean they, they've got yeah. seven they, there's a buy in there somewhere but they've they, before florida but they've got seven straight sec games they've got a kentucky team uh, th- it's always physical, you know, yeah. undefeated right now has a big one this weekend against Florida, Kentucky's yeah. coming to town, um, next weekend, um, yeah. you know, you, uh, Florida. And then, you know, after that buy, you're looking at four straight games against teams that are currently ranked in Florida, Missouri, Ole Miss, Tennessee. That is the defining stretch of this season. But, you know, I, I don't think that you can sleep on that first road game of the season um against Auburn this weekend and then uh you know a, a team that always plays them tough in, in Kentucky yeah Kentucky's off to a pretty good start um we'll see man should be a uh should be a good one um I mean look two years ago that Auburn Georgia game was competitive for a while um that was Harson's first year Bo Nix was there 21 yeah um Hell, it was close to at halftime last year. Kind of, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then um, the Lad McConkey play two years ago kind of broke things open. I think it was seventeen three, and then he scored. It was twenty four three. It was kind of over. Um, yeah, last year was last year was an interesting game. Georgia Georgia pulled away there. Auburn, you know, had Robbie Ashford at quarterback and just didn't have at that time. They were still running the old offense with Robbie Ashford, and it was a hard. It was a it was, you know, kind of a disaster. So it'll be a fun, a fun first half for sure. Fun atmosphere. Probably the best Auburn Georgia atmosphere in there since 19. I mean, 21, Harson's first year was okay, but um, there's a little bit more juice behind what Hugh Freeze is doing. And so um, it, it should be, it should be fun. Georgia's first road game. I think that's going to be Auburn's best chance. Try to hope that Georgia comes in first road game of the year. And you can do something to rattle them. And it might be Ron Roberts trying to be really aggressive. Maybe Auburn says, look, we're going to just attack. And it might put it might put us on an island a couple of times, but we can't sit back and just try to defend this. Maybe they try to be really aggressive and take chances and try to get them behind the chains a couple of times. And um, you know what I mean? I mean, you got to do something. I think sitting back and trying to be and just defend what Georgia does. It's going to be tough. They're going to try to be aggressive, try to force a turnover too, and that could go against you. You could give up some big plays. You absolutely could, but I'm not sure Auburn can win if they're not a little bit overly aggressive maybe 
in blitzing and trying to get to them and create some situations. Um, it's risky, yeah, but I think Auburn's going to have to try to do that, especially early. Use the home crowd to your advantage and try to create some real energy. You know, go out there on that first drive, get a sack or something, or you know, whatever it might be, and re- really try to to set the tone for the for the game. But yeah, I think you're right. The first first quarter is going to be massive um, for both teams for a lot of reasons. Should be a good one. Two thirty CBS Auburn and Georgia. Uh, Georgia's owned this rivalry lately um, for a while now, and so we'll see if what Hugh Freeze can do in his first attempt in the rivalry. Um, Hugh Freeze saying um, he's about love, Palmer. <laughs> He's not about hate, which, by the way, like there's nothing wrong with what he said. My gosh, like what what a terrible thing to say. The guy's like, I don't really believe in hate. Like what an awful thing to say. But for the fans, this has become – and I don't know how it's – for Georgia fans, it's a hatred rivalry for the fans. And so yeah, um, they yeah. want him to come out and go – they want Hugh Freeze to come out and go, hey, this is one of our rivals. Like, we want yeah. to beat him every year. You know, we want to beat him in recruiting, and we want to beat him on the field. Like, that's the deal. And Kirby and Georgia want to do the same thing, and there's no – but that's what they wanted to hear. And Freeze kind of was like – to to, to Freeze's credit, he said, look, I'm new here. I don't – I don't know. Like, I don't he, – he was literally like – He has an experience. I'm, wrong. I'm not saying. He's like, I'm just I, – I, I don't – but you got to remember, he comes from Ole Miss, Mississippi State, which that's a le- that's a different level of hatred. Like but I think a, I, I think you know, I, I and I think that you know if if I remember his he commented on it at some point whether it was during the off season or at media days or whatever he understands the importance of of the Iron Bowl for sure um, you know understanding that that is one of the defining games and I think that you know the the more time that you spend in this rivalry Georgia Auburn um, you know, the the better understanding that you have of you know, where it stands for both of these schools, it's probably not that number one rival. I mean, Georgia's got Florida. It's Auburn has Alabama. Um, those are games that define your season a lot of times and, and you know, can be what gets you into an ICC championship setting or, or keeps you out of it. But this Georgia-Auburn one, it's because of the history to it and, and how many times they've played and how close they are and yada, yada, yada. And and how much overlap there is between the fan bases. It, there yeah. is absolutely a rivalry here, and and um, you know I, I think that as as Georgia Georgia Tech has gone downhill, um, you know the the and the hatred there probably isn't what it used to be. The hatred between Georgia and Auburn, um, you know, certainly is uh, is there. Yeah, so I think uh, I'm sure Hugh Freeze caught some of the reaction to what he said um and he's probably like okay geez all right i mean i you know um you know he basically was just saying look i think we should play these rivalry games because we love auburn and i want to win this because i want auburn fans i'm not going to play the game because i hate them so much and as a player and the way they approach it sure fans no fans hate the other side and and so it was just kind of funny um the reaction which was whatever it'll be done in a few days and he'll play the game and if you think Hugh Freeze like I get what Hugh Freeze said in public about that but if you Hugh Freeze is a savage behind the scenes which will say if you don't think behind the scenes he's telling his team and a lot different than to go out there and play for love of Auburn you know what I mean you don't think he's telling them to and you don't think that he's trying to do that in recruiting um, trying to win these recruiting battles and, and stick it to Georgia and try to turn the flip the card a little bit. Um, it was just it was just kind of a a funny a funny comment and a lot of wild reaction. All right, um, we'll call it a day. Make sure you're at Dogs HQ. Go check out if you're an Auburn fan. Go check them out if you want to read a little bit about Georgia and see what's going on with them the week uh, leading up. Obviously, you can do the same at AuburnLive.com. Catch up on what Hugh Freeze is saying and players are saying and. Um, all that good stuff as Auburn and Georgia prepare for uh, another battle inside Jordan Hare Stadium should be will be a sold out 88,000 plus people um, so it should be an awesome atmosphere 230 CBS weather looks good probably probably lower to mid 80s so it should be uh, a really awesome day in Auburn as Georgia and Auburn go at it all right Palmer appreciate it man yep thanks Justin all right let's get out of here see you guys <laughs>